a wild dunk here by Donovan Mitchell, but there's, I guess there's been some speculation as to whether real or not. Who, who wants in on this? Courtney, what do you think of this dunk? I mean, it, it? it looks real to me. Yeah. How about the basketball guys? Uh, Zach, can you do this? Like, is this is this in your playbook? Uh, or I no? can do that on a seven foot Nerf hoop. Seven foot can Nerf you? hoop. I'm elite, elite. You can't even do it on that. I'm sorry. I was gonna say I don't, I don't know that I could uh, do that on a. Seven wow. Foot. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, Donovan Told Mitchell. We'll see if you can do. We'll see if you can do that in the game, or if that's a little. Uh, maybe it's like a Tom Brady uh, Instagram doctored uh, kind of thing. Hey, Zach Lowe is here, so it's time for the lowdown, the off-season version of the lowdown. Best and worst moves, Zach. Start with this one. Who has had the best off-season so far in the NBA? It has to be the Oklahoma City Thunder. The best young team in the league already. Watched everyone else around them in the West either mostly stand pat or get a little worse in Denver's case. And what did they do? They traded a guy who couldn't fit with their team anymore for one of the best role players in the league in Alex Caruso and signed the best big man on the market at Isaiah Hardenstein. He can play next to Chet Holmgren. He stabilizes the bench. This team is the favorite for the number one seed in the Western Conference and maybe to make the finals. All right, other end of the spectrum. Who's had the worst offseason so far? The two teams who made the finals in the East in the 2020s who aren't Boston, Miami, Milwaukee, wake up. The offseason is here. The rest of the East is maybe kind of trying to pass you by at the top. They really haven't done much. They don't have many tools, but it's kind of sad to watch them just stand in place. How about your personal favorite? What's the move you looked at and went, man, that's the one I really love? I was tempted to go Chris Paul throwing lobs to Wemby, but in the championship landscape, it has to be the Sixers in almost a do or die year, stealing Paul George from the LA Clippers. They have a central casting tailor-made big three. And not only that, they own some Clippers draft picks from the James Harden trade. Huge seismic move. You know who else was impressed with the Paul George acquisition was our friend Mark Spears. Uh, earlier this week on NBA Today, he was talking about what this means for the Sixers in the hierarchy uh, of the Eastern Conference. Take a listen to what Mark had to say. Uh, Sixers, they got Joe Embiid. They got the three best players amongst the two teams. Okay. The three best whoa, players whoa, over Jalen Brunson? Jalen Brunson, whoa, you're whoa. taking Paul George and Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid over Jalen Brunson. Whoa, child. All right, somewhere that is going to be a Josh Hart tweet. <laughs> All right, so Wendy and Zach, you were both sitting there when this happened, so you're not hearing this for the first time. But Wendy, what was your reaction to what Mark said? It was crispy. That was crispy, and obviously Malika <laughs> gave him a chance to take it back, and he uh, he stuck with it. I had Jalen Brunson in fifth on my MVP ballot, so you know I'm going to disagree with Spears. With all due respect, the man's in the Hall of Fame. Um, I don't know if he remembered, but Brunson averaged 42 points a game against the Sixers in the last four games of that series. I was feeling better about the MVP vote every single game that I saw him play there. So, look, Jalen Brunson has proven himself as a megastar in this league, and you know who believes them? The, the Knicks. Uh, the, 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 the trade for Mikael Bridges was really a vote of confidence that Jalen Brunson is a superstar player and can be the best player on a championship team. And he can be. And I think there's a very good chance the Knicks are going to finish with a better record during the regular season than the, the Sixers will next year. Now, will they be a better top-end team if both teams are fully healthy? That's to be seen. And maybe that's the point Spears is making. But I'm not saying a, a negative word about Jalen Brunson. Bobby, how about you? What do you think of what Mark said? I would say if you put Jalen Brunson on the Philadelphia 76ers right now, he would be their second best player. Ooh. And that's – I'll stick with that. So, I felt like Mark wanted to – when you looked at Mark's face on that, I felt like he wanted to take it back. And he's like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to stick with it right now. Um, so, that's how I – yeah, listen. I think Tyrese Maxey and Paul George are a heck of a players. But I think what we saw from Jalen Brunson this past year, I think uh, he's well-deserving of a, a being named, you know, in the top five, top six uh, in, in this league right now. It seems like there's some agreement on who the, the best player is of, of the four we're talking about, and it seems like that would be uh, Joel Embiid. So considering uh, that they did go make this splashy move to get Paul George and help him out, Zach, would you say that Joel Embiid is under the most pressure of anyone to, to cash this in with a title next year? 
I mean, he's got to be up there, if not number one. And we should mention that, yeah, Philadelphia probably has more top-end talent than the Knicks, and their big three is probably better than any three players the Knicks could pick. But they also have half a team right now. They have to fill out their team. And we just saw with the Celtics having really good top-level depth is crucial in the playoffs. The Sixers don't have that yet. And Joel Embiid is hurt every year in the playoffs. He's underperformed almost every year in the playoffs. It's time for the Sixers to make sure he's healthy for the playoffs and for Joel Embiid to step up and give us the playoff run from him we've been waiting for for a long time now. Everyone crowning the Sixers, I must have missed when they won a second round playoff series in the Joel Embiid era because it has not happened yet. Bobby, what do you think about the pressure on Embiid now with the, with the way this Sixers team looks? Yeah, when you win the offseason on paper, there's always pressure on you. And I think certainly the inability to get to a conference finals for the last five, six years, forever, in fact, uh, there are going to be heightened expectations in, in Philadelphia here. Wendy, what do you got for a final word on this uh, Joel Embiid uh, situation? We have 50. Uh, yeah, we have 15 years of, uh, of data now on what happens when teams take their whole team down to just get star players on their roster. And typically in the first year, they don't have quite enough and they need another year to build up their, their, their backups. I expect that to be the case. If you're saying there's a bunch of pressure on Embiid this year, you're reacting to their front-end star power. But this team is not yet built to win at the highest level. They're going to need some more time. All right, much more NBA as we roll along here on Get Up. But we're going to move now to the NFL. But they are must-see TV. You said the drama is greater than the product. It almost, almost feels like a reality show. You know how we kind of follow along in the NFL? There's hard knocks and you're watching these storylines. I feel like the Lakers are currently one of those situations because you're, you want to know what's going to happen. It, it, I think all of our minds were kind of expecting something, but we kind of all knew what the reality of the situation was going to be. But meanwhile, hey, one of those names on LeBron's short list, DeMar DeRozan, well, he wasn't on that list of players he was willing to take a pay cut for, but he's also still on the market. It's been reported that he's willing to be very patient during this process. I mean, Chicago could do a sign and trade deal. Maybe he signs a one-year deal and then tries free agency next year where maybe there could be better options for him. But Tim, I want to know, what do you think ends up being the best case scenario for DeRozan? Yeah, and maybe this is a pipe dream, but I see him as an amazing fit in Memphis. Now, the Grizzlies had a terrible season. It has been an awful run there in Memphis with John Morant all up in the videos, not playing in basketball games. This is a Grizzlies team that I really felt was a championship contender. You know what they need? An old pro like DeMar DeRozan. Someone who comes in, brings that veteran leadership to the locker room, obviously has won a ton of games, and he makes big shots. So I think Desmond Bain's a heck of a player. He's not this guy. And this guy makes big boy shots in the playoffs, but I think he adds a certain level of professionalism to a Grizzlies team that, with Jaron Jackson Jr. and the other pieces around, like, they got some guys there. Like, they could be really tough. DeMar DeRozan makes really tough shots. He makes pull-up jumpers. He's as good as it gets in the mid-range game. If I was Memphis, this would be the guy I would be targeting. I think he takes your franchise to a whole nother level. As far as giving him a lot of money for a lot of years, I think he's a great short-term solution, but uh, he's a Hall of Famer when it's all said and done. And if you could add him to your roster, you're adding a very valuable piece. Maybe a short-term solution, but certainly still out there on the market. As the name, the list of names is starting to really dwindle down as we sit midway through or the first week of June or July, rather. But I want to take a step back for a second. Just look at the first few days of free agency as a whole. Outside of LeBron's family and his paycheck, who would you say has been the biggest winner thus far in free agency? <laughs> and my first thought is the Knicks, right? I think the Knicks, you know, they got Mikel Bridges. That's my first inclination. But as I kind of like dug a little bit more, you know, I'm not buying the Paul George to Philadelphia. It's like, man, I've seen this movie before. Let's add in another guy that can't win the big game along with a big man who can't win the big game. You know, I thought OKC is good to one free agency. 